Hello. Um, so today what we'll do is we'll look at uh, programming languages and see how the computer starts reading and executing uh, a, a program in, in, in each of these languages. Uh, in the sense, uh, uh, we have a fair idea that uh, a program is read uh, from, I mean, uh, computers can of course read only files from the beginning until the end, but where, where, where does a computer start executing a program um, maybe i'll just uh, demonstrate what i'm talking about so here's a, a repository of uh, uh, indie keyboard tools which uh, has uh, something called an ime parser which uh, gets executed for parsing jquery rules from xml to uh, whatever uh, jQuery rules from uh, motor format to XML. Now, uh, this is uh, as we can see, this is, this is a JavaScript file. Now, if you open that, um, the thing about JavaScript is that uh, it's uh, it's executed from the first line downwards in the sense. Uh, uh, the computer first comes and reads this line where HTTP equal to require HTTP so it assigns HTTP um, module to HTTP and then async module to async fs to fs and then and then it executes this line if it's a uh, file cross dot argue second argument is not given it will return an error and then this like and then the computer will execute this line and then this line and then this line and so on and so forth that's how uh, JavaScript gets uh, executed. Now, uh, this this is not the same in all the languages, although it's very 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 similar in many languages, and that's what we will explore in the uh, in this uh, talk. So, for in the same uh, repository, there's this uh, shell file. Let's see how that is so uh, actually a shell file also gets executed very much like that first this line since this is a comment it, it is not uh, executed as such uh, but uh, it's these lines which I validated first and then location is set to a folder and source is said and then this line this line so this is how a shell file is also executed now the only difference to this pattern uh, is if there is a uh, if there is a function defined uh, let's see see for for example this to hex here is a function where to hex is is, is ta takes a character and then uh, converts uh, that to I suppose hex uh, and uh, that is not executed as such. I mean, this uh, this block gets executed, but what does executing that mean here? It is uh, the hex is uh, saved. The function is saved as to hex, and then there will be a, uh, a function called to hex allow uh, uh, ready for being called the actual execution of uh, this thing happens when someone calls to hex with a character passed to it so if we if we go down somewhere we should see uh, to hex being called uh, here so this is where it uh, the function gets called but uh, as you can s uh, i mean i don't know if i'm making m myself clear but uh, it starts from the beginning and goes down and goes down and goes down. That's how JavaScript works. Uh, that's how shell script works. Unless uh, if there's a function, it's, it's defined. Uh, it's actually not doing anything different. It's it's reading from the top and going down. A definition of a function it doesn't do anything. It doesn't execute anything. It's only when that function is called that it gets executed. And that's what uh, I mean. Now, now let's look at... Uh, uh, there's this uh, concept called 
packages so javascript uh, there are a lot of uh, if we go to npm js uh, we can see that there are lots of packages let's uh, search for uh, something uh, searching for a search package um, it's very old nevertheless uh, when we open the source code of this package this is a random package okay i've never seen this package and i can't even find the source code of that package so let's look at uh, something else 10 days ago okay so if we see this package um, we will see that there is a package.json file somewhere now so i mean there are so many of these there's a javascript file here there's a javascript file here we don't know which one gets executed first right uh, i mean when someone executes this index.js file they'll read from the top to the bottom but why would someone execute index.js rather than benchmark.js and in uh, javascript packages uh, in uh, node packages npm packages that is defined in package.json where there will be something called scripts uh, so if someone calls npm run benchmark then it will run benchmark.js file now by default um, uh, node runs uh, the index.js as the file unless someone uh, specifies uh, something so that is their package.json default main i guess um, is uh, uh, index.js but otherwise uh, mostly if, if there's a package if there's a file specified it's that uh, in package.json in a script and we run that script then it that is the file which gets uh, executed now um, let's go to python uh, python is uh, interesting in that uh, python also works just like javascript so this is pyens which is a uh, uh, library in libindic so python actually has something interesting it's something called init.py this thing gets executed first when we are loading a module and then uh, whatever uh, uh, is there inside so for for, for example if, if someone runs core.py it will get executed just like javascript in that order uh, from first line till till the last line so from future import import class it's defining a class and all that gets executed now uh, when people use python they mostly um, do not i mean th there are two ways python is usually run one it is run as a script the other it is run as a um, um, dependency so um, so this this example gives uh, running python as a dependency where uh, we are importing from libindic.pyens import pyens so when this happens uh, when you do this in your python code what happens is uh, it goes to libindic.pyens and then tries to import pyens so this is libindic.pyens uh, so by default uh, this is init.py that's run and then init.py has a pyens defined here which is coming from dot core so if you go to the core there is uh, pyens defined here so uh, dot core um, when you're importing something from dot core first it will run this entire file and then uh, because there is a pyens within it uh, there's a class pines within it that gets imported in this uh, in this line uh, in this line that's how uh, python executes uh, itself now there are some uh, some cases where uh, you specify a command to run for example this setup.py 
you could run it like uh, this uh, example python setup.py so when you do this uh, what happens is the setup.py is run from the beginning to the end so you run from setup tools import setup so it will go and read uh, setup tools and then import setup from that and then call set setup with this this this, this. that's how uh, python runs uh, this thing now let's look at uh, something like r so r um, let's see r is uh, this is an r project uh, this is a project where i create maps uh, some maps so r is uh, again like uh, javascript and python and all that in that uh, when we run an r script so this dot file uh, it starts from the first line and goes all the way down um, all the way down till the last line so in this uh, in this actually i have uh, uh, i mean the same thing that i told you about in javascript and python where we define functions and then run them later that has actually happened here also so what happens here is first it loads libraries ggplot all these libraries and it's source common dot r so what it's doing is this maps dot r file is running within it uh, the other file the common dot r file so at this point uh, this file stops getting executed and then this file common dot r starts getting executed so it is loading some libraries and then creating some function setup folders get and read functions uh, so these are only functions that are getting defined here and then after that once this file is over this continues and then some more functions load shape file title theme uh, so many of these functions are getting defined actually this is not a function this is a variable assignment uh, so all all of these are getting defined plot change combine to data clean map data all of these are getting defined and then at the very end i've created a function called run and what this function does is it is uh, calling other functions set of folders path to data to worker data all states data all these functions even here it's not getting executed at this moment so all of these things are just getting defined 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 uh, and then at the very end i've called run so when when the computer reaches this line it would have executed all of this uh, this run is equal to function it would have remembered okay when you say run i'll run all these functions it would have remembered but then at the very end when i say run then it goes back and runs this function and then it sets up the fo and then it runs this function set of folders so very set of folders i think set of folders in the other uh, the other common dot r file so then it runs set of fol folders function in which which creates an output directory and then uh, what is it run uh, then it takes uh, environment uh, data file uh, then it reads that excel data and then it cleans the data and then maps data so all that all that gets executed so this is a very common pattern uh, we see in uh, programming um, in many programs although the computer executes everything so if if this line was not there if i had directly returned setup folders here and uh, path to data here uh, without this line then uh, the computer would have created the folder at this line itself at li line 132 itself it would have created the folder but instead what i did is i just uh, told the computer okay when i say run you run these functions and uh, then i said run at the very end this is a very common pattern um, that's uh, uh, that's used in uh, programming and uh, it, it it could confuse uh, new learners on um, how the entire thing gets uh, run the, the the order of execution changes because of this uh, functions being defined and then being called later uh, but uh, the best way to uh, model uh, that in your mind is to imagine that this is just uh, us telling the computer okay run means 
this is a fu this is the function but i i didn't tell you to run the function i just told you when i say run you do all these these, these things similarly uh, when i say set up folders you should create a folder um but i i i didn't ask you to run setup folders till i reach this line although i did define setup folders at this line when I, when when you said source common dot r i didn't ask you to run that fold uh, at that moment so that that's the way uh, functions get defined and then later called uh, which is something uh, we need to remember so uh so actually in r studio uh, it, it gets even more interesting in r uh, i'll just load r studio for the sake of uh demonstration in r studio we can um execute uh, within uh within the project uh we can execute any any function uh, i mean any line so for example i'll just open the project that we just saw uh on recent projects uh there it is so uh, this is a maps function so in our studio you uh, there are a uh, couple of ways where let me just see why is this console okay uh -huh. there are a couple of ways uh, you can run this file one is you click source um and what source will do is it will run the entire file just like we have this source uh, which will make it run this entire command.r uh, file uh there is a source button which would make it run this entire file or uh, r actually has this nice thing called uh, run where it will run only the current line or selection so if i if i click uh, keep it here and click run or press control enter it will run that particular line see it, it ran only that line so uh, so if i want to load only this library d player i can uh, put it there and so you can see that is just loaded that line. so this is uh, one way where uh, um, development environments like r studio or uh, even python notebooks uh, uh, or uh, uh, any any development environment might uh, uh, run code in a different order than we expect it to run uh, that's something to consider when we are coding with things like r studio now we'll come to something uh, totally different from the way uh, we have seen which is java so in java things are uh, things are object oriented right so let's take uh, the arogya setu oh, apparently arogya setu source code um oh actually this is uh, android so we we will come back to it later uh, let's take um, i have uh, at metastring i have been building this project for health heat map now it it has a project which reads um, excel files and things like that so this is all written in java now with java the thing is uh, you would have a, a hierarchy of files and folders and um, within it uh, there will be uh, some some uh, class so um, so imagine i am running main dot java you know, the main class um, what java runs is a static method called main so it will look for this main uh, method in any of your uh, uh, let me let me open another uh sorry this is the uh, backend for the 
heat map uh, platform on the building so again uh, i've created a main dot java here now you can see this is a uh, this is a large uh, uh, this thing uh, class but it take it, uh, java runs java starts so java is object oriented programming right uh, so in object oriented programming everything is object so you you define classes you define um, methods of classes and things like that so objects exist everywhere so where where where, where does the program start from that's a that's a that's a uh, uh, that's a nice question when you when you come to java world you will face um, you don't um, i think even in c c or c++ the same same uh, same problem arises uh, i think even rest uh, um i think uh, i i have been covered uh, i do not uh, program regularly in, in these languages but uh, when you have object oriented programming you you have a problem of uh, you you are defining objects uh, everywhere you are creating objects uh, for example let's say so well i probably have a table object somewhere here uh, csv table this is an object i've defined um, now this table uh, this object has a constructor and things like that now so we can define a lot of objects um, everywhere but then where does the program start from right the program has to start somewhere you, you you've defined a lot of objects but so similar to how uh, in uh, in the earlier uh, example i sh i told you uh, where uh, there were many um i can't seem to find that GitHub. Ah, there it is. So, uh, in in some way, these are also objects that you're defining, right? Uh, you're defining an object here. You're defining an object here. Till the let's call it, uh, let's open maps data. You're defining something here you're defining something here at the very end you're calling run and because you know the program runs from top to bottom you know the all of this gets executed and then this will get executed and then the other things will get executed but in java uh, it's it's different uh, it's uh, it's not that it gets executed from the first line till the last line all of this gets read by the program uh, read by the virtual machine but at the end what it will do is it will run this main uh, public static void main method this exact method so that's how uh, java runs uh, 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 programs uh, it's not that we can run only this method uh, if you load uh, this project in uh, an IDE like uh, IntelliJ uh, it we will be able to I mean the IDE will create objects IDE will run its own main uh, method and then um, I mean it will interact with objects uh, in different ways but uh, Usually, what happens is this uh, by default this main method gets executed. Similarly, in in REST, uh, let me see if I can uh, add on distribute uh, GitLab REST. Uh, okay, I don't know if uh, uh, cargo. Let's search cargo add on. So I had this um, REST project called uh, Add-on Distributor. 
uh, yeah it's still there oops it's got 93 downloads is it wow it's interesting anyhow uh, what this then does is let me see if there's a source code home page repository so um, uh oh okay so um, in this again uh, if you go to SRC um, Rush has this concept again where main.rs was uh, library.rs essentially you can again see this is the main function that's the function which gets uh, executed so even though uh, I have all these uh, things defined uh, in a file to actually run that uh, the, 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 the language doesn't just uh, run random um, random methods we have to define something like uh, a main main function and that's where the program starts getting executed now uh, this is slightly different in how Android uh, uh, does it we'll come back to it once uh, we f we go through web projects uh, so in web projects uh, especially modern websites so for example SMC's website and we actually load the website uh, the way it gets executed is it, uh, I wish it was wrapped beautifully uh, let's see uh, it runs uh, HTML uh, I mean it loads the HTML first and then whenever it sees a script tag somewhere um, I mean whenever it sees link tags it loads the link link I mean icons uh, so style sheet and all of that uh, but whenever it sees a link a script tag uh, here's a script tag it will then download that tag and uh, uh, download that file and then run run it again like uh, from the first line till the last line so but uh, when we look at the source code it will be entirely different in modern web projects uh, uh, there's a lot of build tooling uh, so this is where uh, is main.js is where the 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 in this project it starts so how do, how, do, how did i know it's that main roger so again this is a packages and uh, driven uh, this thing uh, project so this build command npm run build is what we use to build the website right so when it's being built it calls view cli service and build now how the program starts running will be all depending on how view cli service builds now we don't know how view cli service builds uh, we could search view cli service build and uh, read the documentation on what it builds where it uh, looks for files and so on uh, so as you can see it produces a production ready bundle in the dist uh, so it it, it actually is about how view, view organizes the uh, files and where it reads from and things like that and uh, let's see okay there's a view config so probably when we read the view documentation we'll see that it'll read the view configuration uh, but it doesn't have anything about where the source files are so there's a possibility that by default view checks for um, uh, view view looks at src and uh, main uh, we'll just confirm that let's see 
me. Okay, there's an entry file. See, so this entry file is where the program enters, right? Uh, this, we, this entire talk is over entry. So src main.ts typescript if it's there that is the first thing that uh, the program will run otherwise src main.js so that's how this program is run so when when you run view cli build it will run main.js first and then main.js within it is importing view app and all that stuff so all of that gets uh, gets executed and like that like that now what uh, what the build thing will do is it will put all of these files uh, starting from main of course um, it will run all this and whatever is required is uh, probably bundled into one file and then uh, that is referenced to in the index uh, i mean when when the page loads in html it is referred to uh, like i showed so that's how um, modern web projects are it's a bit tricky you will have to read the documentation to figure out what is considered as a default uh, entry point and uh, things like that and it will differ from project to project framework to framework and all that stuff so now we will now we will see another uh, such a complicated uh, uh, entry point thing which is android projects so in this uh, android projects Android is again uh, Java, Java-ish uh, project. So you, we, we, we would expect uh, uh, a main method to be run, but that's not really how uh, Android projects work. So, for example, uh, there is no main method here. You can, there's no main method here, right? So the way android projects run is android has a file called uh, android manifest.xml let's see if we can find that there it is so in in android uh, the um, when you install an apk when you install a file from play store and all that it's the android manifest which is kind of um, telling the phone the your device which uh, files to run which packages to run and and all that stuff uh, in fact uh, i didn't mention this when, when we looked at uh, java um, uh, but even in uh, even in java uh, there is this uh, concept of a uh, of a main class or a manifest uh, entry so i can show you manifest so you can see the uh, when when we are creating a jar the we are defining okay uh, this main is the class that we need to run so that when we when we execute this uh, uh, project as java.jar uh, java if um, if jar run this uh, some health heat map api dot jar it it will automatically execute this this particular uh, main uh, class and in that main class it will of course execute the main method now similarly in android it's the android manifest.xml which which tells uh, what project to run i mean what uh, uh, classes to run what packages to load and things like that so if you can in the application uh, they've said uh, there's a activity which has uh, an intent filter called launcher and uh, main so this this particular uh, uh, thing comes up in the launcher comes up in the home screen uh, or the in the home app launcher app drawer and when you click on that icon that's how we start uh, applications mostly right uh, mostly i say because uh, in android applications can start in many ways and that's all captured in this ma android manifest file but when we are clicking on the launcher this particular uh, activity 
which is defined here is the one which uh, runs now we will now just open that particular activity splash activity right uh, splash activity so this is what uh, gets run now how does this run this again doesn't have a main uh, method so in android uh, there's something called life cycle for each class so uh, first uh, there's a on create so this is run first when a when a when a view is created for the first time and then uh, the, there are other life cycles so if, if you can actually search android life cycle uh, let's see understanding so the activity life cycle um, and read about it but essentially here this image gives us all, all that we need to know firstly it's uh, on create which runs and then mm, on start and then on resume then activity is running and then pause and all these things so this is the way uh, in android a uh, project uh, gets uh, program gets executed uh, it will first start on create uh, and then uh, i mean if it's an activity of course it'll it'll do all this uh, on, on create and things like that uh, in fact in android other than activities there are many other things uh, so the, so we look at all the other things in this um, manifest so this is activity home activity onboarding activity these these are all just defined um, permission activity these are defined so that uh, they can be called in different locations uh, but then there are things called services right there's a service here there's a service here so this service is interesting this is a FCM messaging service so if there's a firebase message so firebase is a service um, within android which uh, in which uh, say you have a notification it goes to the google um, server firebase server and then it comes to the device so if something like that happens it's saying this service will handle that so let's open that uh, firebase service uh fcm messaging service so fcm this is that now again this one won't have a main and uh, i suspect it won't have an on create also because services has a different life cycle now android service life cycle let's see the service life cycle starts with on start command so service when the command request the service be started see um, when the service needs to be started you call on start command or start service uh, okay there, there is an on create also oh, and, and things like that so service has a different uh, entry point is essentially what i'm saying so in android android heavily relies on all these entry points of methods and uh, uh, being able to call and uh, call directly into these entry points that's that's what uh, android's style of uh, uh, executing a program is and that's really important because in android you have uh, things like you could open a notification and then you would directly go into a chat page for example in, in your chat application right so that happens when that happens you don't need the code that uh, loads uh, all your chats to even uh, run you don't need that at all you only need the code that runs um, the messages of a particular chat that is the one uh, that needs to run when you open a notification right so that kind of uh, 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 this thing is available when you um, when you have um, 
Android manifest and uh, the way Android runs uh, this thing so I actually didn't prepare a lot for this uh, but I think uh, what I was uh, trying to tell here or try to achieve here is help uh, a new learner build a mental model of where or how programs are entered into and executed in uh, various uh, languages and various uh, frameworks and things like that and I haven't even covered uh, uh, I don't know 10 percentage of most uh, projects because the various frameworks for example in Python there is something called Django right now let's open uh, libindic uh, uh, some project Shilpa uh, flask now this one uh, this is a Django uh, oh, I think Django project and uh, it depends on the way uh, Django oh this is a flask sorry uh, what am I even talking about it says flask the very so uh, so let's talk about flask so flask is a, a, a framework like Django so flask would 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 expect that files be uh, uh, having certain ways of uh, certain uh, functions certain um, modules and things like that root uh, let's see where is uh, static is it static or not static templates dispatch uh, so let's see shilpa.py okay so shilpa.py is the one which starts uh, flask now it's actually configuring everything here okay so flask doesn't dictate how the uh, files have to be arranged and all that but some frameworks do detect how files have to be arranged and how where it looks for files and which files are run at what time and what methods are run and all that so that uh, we have to learn to be able to read a lot of uh, projects and software and that mental model is what i wanted to uh, talk about in this okay thank you i think it's a very boring long talk but nonetheless thank you